Today, we're going to continue our discussion about that bug from last time, and we're going to talk about the importance of corner cases. Welcome back, everybody. Today's video is going to be a quick one, but I just wanted to continue where we left off talking about that little bug from last week's video. Before we dive into it, I want to give a big thanks to all of you who support this channel. And if you find this content useful, please like the videos and subscribe, share them with friends. It really helps the channel and helps me reach more people who are trying to teach themselves how to program or who are struggling in their classes or whatever is going on that makes you come looking for my videos. Also, if you want to support this channel directly, you can do that on Patreon. Also, that's where you get access to all the source code from all my videos. Okay, so all that said, let's jump into the code and take a look at, well, basically, let's start where we left off. Now, last time we were looking at this code, we had a little bit of a funky little function here. It's an attempt to write a string length function. Maybe it's an effort to write one that is as concise and short as possible. And we had a bunch of tests. So we had this test it function that was testing how all this worked. And then my main down here was just test it on a bunch of different strings. Okay. And so last time we compiled it. Okay. So it's still compiled. And if I run it, we noticed before that for all of these tests, everything was fine. I told you there was a bug there and your homework was to take a look at it and see if you could figure out what the problem is with this function. Now, the problem which a lot of you saw is that I'm not handling one of my corner cases. And that is specifically the case where we're talking about the empty string, right? One of the things that I really forgot to test here is does this work when my string is empty? And if we come in here, well, you'll notice that, hold on, once this compiles, if we run it, you'll notice that up here, it really doesn't work if we have the empty string. Now let's talk about why really quick. And the reason why, so let's look at how this works. It takes this string, it's a pointer to the beginning of a string in memory. And what it's gonna do is it's going to have a pointer, which is called end, and that's gonna be assigned to the beginning of the string. And then we're going to basically go character by character through this array. And right here, I'm trying to be clever. You know, I was trying to be clever. I made a video recently about not writing clever code, and this is a perfect example of where I was trying to get fancy. And basically what this code does is it basically does, it pre-increments. So what it's gonna do is it's going to increment end. It's gonna move it over one character, and then it's gonna dereference it and get the character value. And if that happens, to be zero, then this while loop, that'll look like a false and it'll jump out. So it's basically going until you hit a zero. And at that point, then it says, if I hit a zero, then let's bail. And then down here, what I'm doing is basically just taking the end address, the, the pointer value at the end, subtracting the beginning away. And that's going to tell me how many characters we looked at before we reached our null character. Now, the problem, of course, is that because we are pre-incrementing, if it is empty, then we're basically moving before we've checked the current current one that we're looking at. And that's why it fails. And actually this current version of string length could produce a lot of different results. We got a four here, but it really depends on what is stored in memory after this string that I'm testing, because it's gonna miss that null character. And so whatever happens to be there, it could give me four, it could give me 40, it could give me 400. I really have no idea what it's going to give me. In this case, I'm pretty sure it's picking up ABC, which is the next character, probably in the program, the next character array. It's probably being stored right after it. And so I'm guessing that's what's happening. But the main point is, is that we don't actually know what it's gonna produce and what it's gonna do. So how could we fix this? Well, one option, of course, is we could come in here and say, instead of pre-increment, let's use post-increment like this. Now it's going to check the value for first and then increment. And it will keep doing that until it hits a zero. So if we try to compile now, you're going to see basically things are working a bit better, except that now because we're using post increment, we're always going one too far. So what I'm going to do here is also take off one more because I know I'm always going to increment it at least once. And so if we come down here, we can make it and run our example program. And now our results are matching. Okay. So this example, I hope it it's helpful. Really, there's two things I hope you get out of it. One is 
you got to make sure you check corner cases. So corner cases, anytime you're working with your programs are just things that are going to give slightly weird behavior. So empty cases. If you're dealing with a data structure that can be full, so if it's an array, check the case where you're full, like where you're you're trying to add something to a full array or you know it doesn't really apply here, but there's a lot of cases where that would be a corner case. But any situation in your code where you expect the program to maybe deal with things a little differently, that's something you definitely want to have a test for to make sure you catch it. The second thing, of course, is this is another reminder of some of the problems that you run into with trying to get fancy and trying to show off to your friends by writing crazy code, which, I mean, don't get me wrong, it's fun. It's a fun exercise to try to improve your skills and to foster creativity in how you create code. But if I were trying to get the length of a string in any kind of real program that I was going to maintain, I would just use the built-in string length function because trying to get fancy with all these pointers here, I can definitely get me into situations where I miss things, I miss corner cases, and I just don't notice bugs, even though things seem to be working okay. So that's it for today. I hope that was helpful. I hope you got something out of it. Again, be sure to like this video, subscribe so you don't miss next week's video, and I will see you next week.